Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. You are on The Steady Coach, and it is a huge privilege and pleasure today to bring you this success story from Sam D. Sam was a member of my coaching group for about a year. So I got to see Sam's recovery week by week, and that makes this success story interview a special treat for me. I really love interviewing people whose recoveries I got to witness personally. Sam had a whole bunch of terrible symptoms. She not only had fibromyalgia for over 20 years, she also, of course, had dizziness that started more recently in January of 2022. And her primary symptoms were visual, including visual instability, waviness, and visual snow. She also had balance issues, general dizziness, and at her worst, she was really having a hard time getting out of bed. Sam describes here in this interview her process of recovery, how the coaching group played into that, what work she had to do on her own, and what her life looks like today. I think you'll get a lot of reassurance and ideas from this interview. And as always, if you enjoy it, I'd love to hear from you. Questions and comments, please drop them below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please follow the podcast. You can also hop over to YouTube, leave a question or comment. All of these things help me reach more people. Please enjoy this conversation with Sam. Sam, I am so excited to see you. We just greeted each other 30 seconds ago, but I'm greeting you again. This oh, is so well, exciting. I, I, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Oh, I know we're I'm, I'm, we're both already to like we're ready to dissolve into tears and we haven't <laughs> even started anything yet. <laughs> so, Tell me about it. It's been, I know. It hasn't been that long, but it's been long. I know <laughs> it has. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about the fact that, I mean, for a while we were seeing each other every week. So yeah. it's been it's been a, a I mean, it, maybe just a couple months since you graduated, something yeah, like that, a few months. January, February-ish. Yeah. 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 And really, All right. I have to force myself. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. Graduate. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm just so excited for you to share your story. So let's just start with you introducing yourself to those who don't know you. So who is Sam? Um, I'm just a regular girl who got dizzy um, shortly after I received my third um, COVID vaccine. Um, and um, yeah, so that's how I, I um, what led me to, to connect with Dr. Yo, um, or at least to connect with her videos online. Um, I think that was the very early days of, of the counseling group. Um, but that's what led me to you, uh, initially. Um, I'm also a mom, I have a nine-year-old daughter and a husband and a little bird now. So, that's so things good. are kind of busy. Um, is the bird going to make a cameo? Uh, he can, he can. I had to boot him cause he could be loud and I didn't yeah, understand. <laughs> so, he comes in for chomps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they as they do. They're very, they're they're very demanding pets. They're not just like. Yeah. I was like, thinking about that because yeah, you know, not too long ago, I was very hesitant to take on any additional responsibilities because I, you know, I just felt overwhelmed with managing my own stuff. But um, in in you know, bringing this little bird home, they're like the most high maintenance creatures <laughs> in the world, like. I don't think I could have cho chosen, you know, anything more, more um, cr work creating because he creates a lot of work. Yeah, he me. does. <laughs> yeah, he does. I, I feel like there's an allegory in there somewhere that we'll get to later in this conversation yeah. about being, getting to the point where you feel like you could take something like that on. Um, okay. So let's, let's start at the beginning then. So Everything started after you got that third dose. And when was that? That was? That was January 2022. Okay. All right. Now, for context, though, mm -hmm. this was not the first time you had had chronic medically unexplained symptoms. No. So prior to the dizziness kicking off, and it didn't really, or maybe I didn't notice it, Um it wasn't the primary symptom after the, the COVID shot that really got me. That was tinnitus. But 
I think over in the weeks following, it really picked up. Mm -hmm. um, but back to my previous issues, um, I'd been diagnosed with fibromyalgia in my early, well, not really in my early 20s. I knew something was wrong for a really long time. And it took like almost a decade for somebody to say that word and tell me what it meant. And basically, you know, I realized that it was, you know, they're basically telling me, we don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know how to help you. You know, yeah. you're not going to die, but you're yeah. not going to be, you know, not in pain. Right. Okay. So would you mind just sharing again for context? Because I know other folks have asked in my comment section, mm -hmm. do you see people with other, uh, you know, medically unexplained chronic symptoms? So what kinds of symptoms did you have? So even prior to the dizziness and the, the tinnitus yeah. or tinnitus, what, what did you experience? So just like, it, it was really like a merry-go-round of symptoms all the time. Um, the fibromyalgia kind of like that was just my body would hurt all the time, mostly my back and my neck, but it could be other places. Um, and it would seem that random things would set it off. Mm -hmm. um, it, it never really made sense in terms of like an injury or, you know, like I could just you know, wake up and like a new spot would be hurting. Um, and I remember like when that first started, it came with headaches. My vision was blurry. My vision had, you know, it, I would see waves. Like it would look like you were um, looking on the, the hood of a car from inside and you'd see the heat waves in the summer. So that's uh, what my vision looked like for a long time. And because it was called fibromyalgia at that time, I thought, you know, it was all related. I, I wasn't terrified, but really the dizziness like took terror <laughs> to a new level yeah. um, compared to like all the other stuff. Um, yeah. You know, so, and again, um, headaches, migraines, um, I would get the auras. I, you know, times I would be driving home from school, I'd have to pull over and just like, <laughs> you know, be safe while, and let the the headache run its course until I could, you know, get back on the road. Um, so it was really like, you know, you name it, I probably had it. Experienced yeah. It. So, and, and no solution was really offered for you. No, um, like, I mean, I was sent to physiotherapy. I did that for a long time. Eventually, I let that go because it wasn't doing me any good. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I would perceived that I was injuring myself more from doing it. So I stopped. Um, and then I just got into like, I, I would stretch every day, like, um, and it wasn't, I think a healthy thing. I, I thought like, if I missed a day of stretching, like everything's going to go to hell. Like it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I would do it with, with like a fear was really the driving force behind like everything was just not to make it worse. Yeah. Wow. So it sounds like you really, you weren't a stranger to chronic symptoms. I, I know the dizziness took it to a totally different level after Jan, uh, January of 2022, mm -hmm. but it also sounds like you were just kind of able to tolerate it and live with it. Is that, would that yeah. be an accurate statement? Yeah. Okay. I had like, um, just really fine tuned my life <laughs> around how I felt and like everything was just to manage how I felt and, and get through the day. Wow. For um, so long, for like yeah. over a decade. Oh, um, probably over half my life. So I started feeling that right after um, I graduated from university. So I must've been like 22, 23-ish. Mm -hmm. um, was, it, you know, new to the workforce. I was very stressed out and, and then the headache started. And then it felt like it was just like moving down my body. And then it was just there all the time. Um, and I tried everything. Like I went to many doctors. I had all kinds of scans. I, um, I would do um, acupuncture, like whatever therapy was out there that I thought might help. I did it. I was on all kinds of medications, um, anti-inflammatories, painkillers, you name it. Um, but nothing really, nothing helped. It might knock me out, may make me sleep. 
um, right. which was kind of a relief, but I really couldn't function on, on those medications. So, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, would it, do you think it's accurate then to say this backdrop is really important context? For what happened. Yeah, it is. I mean, having the perspective that I have now, knowing, um, you know, where all of my issues actually stem from, um, it it makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you know, I spent like 20 years of my life confused. I'm like, well, why is this happening to me? Why is this thing, you know, moving from over here to over here to down there to, you know, um, so it makes sense now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for being willing to share. So I, I just, I think that, that I agree with you. I think that's just very important background information mm -hmm. because it makes everything else make even more sense. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So if it's okay, can we dig into how the symptoms showed up and what kinds of symptoms you ended up with? So you started with the ringing in the ears or the sounds in your ears, and then it progressed to dizziness. So what yeah. kinds of dizziness are we talking about? So at first, I don't even know that I would call it dizzy. Like I was struggling. It wasn't spinning, but it was like unbalanced. Um, and I remember, so my ears, it, the sound, like I almost could see noise coming out of my ears. It was so loud. It was like a tire going off in both ears, like nonstop for wow. for a few weeks, if not, you know, a month or two until it, it started calming down, but it was still pretty loud. Like I just could not pay attention to it. Um, and then I would notice I would be walking down the hall in my house and I'd, you know, be falling towards one of one side or the other. Um, so that's what I would mean by like the not having balance. Um, and then, you know, as things progressed, the ears got better. Um, but the the balance and I had a lot of visual symptoms. So um, I guess the best way I can describe what that looked like is like snow on a TV screen. So everything would have like little dots all over them. Um, mm -hmm. or like everything I saw had like a layer of that or a film. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was really distressing, like to, to suddenly have that. And I honestly, like, I was like, I think I'm dying. <laughs> like, this is, there's so many things going on with me now. Like I thought I was poisoned. Like there was some sort of like toxic thing happening in my body as a result of, of, um, getting that last uh, COVID shot and, and, you know, I guess looking back on it now, I, it makes sense because I was, we were, I, I most people, I guess, were really afraid of COVID and, you know, like, again, the fear like drives everything. Um, at least it did for me. So, you know, again, not knowing and then not knowing what was in those shots and thinking, you know, they really cranked this and got it out quickly. Like, is this stuff really safe or not or whatever? So I had that all in the back of my mind um, while all this was happening. Like all the symptoms were just at their peak. Got it. Yeah. So the and, factor yeah. just like kept amp it fed itself. Right. It just like kept amping up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry you went through that. And again, I, I always, I think it makes sense. I, I, I have, you know, I am not the right person to ask about, you know, vaccinations, but I, I, when the immune system has a response in general, it, people have symptoms. It's normal to have symptoms. Now, obviously what you experienced and what many people experience is not normal, but it sounds like you you see that there was also more going on than just that. There was there was a lot of fear and there was a lot of backdrop that was also potentially yeah. contributing. Yeah, and it's funny, like now I look back and and like, you know, I thought we were doing so well, like my family and you know, myself and during that time I was like, oh, we're, you know, everybody's healthy everybody's at home, everybody, you know, still has a job, we're able to take care of us. And, you know, you're watching the, the, the news on TV and like the whole world is going to, you know what? Yeah. Um, so I felt like we're doing okay. We're hanging in. And then 
um, you know, now I, I can really see that my emotional state was like, not okay. <laughs> really not okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Considering it, I think all of us were on that same level at mm -hmm. that time. Okay. So tell me from there. So these symptoms start coming on. You start to think there's something horribly wrong. You have this visual snow. Mm -hmm. You start to feel really off balance. The tinnitus happens. It starts to get better. Do you call your doctor? What do you, what do you so do? Actually, you know what? I skipped a little bit. So what happened was, so the tinnitus started, um, that went on for a few days and I was, you know, just like waiting, like anything else. I'm like, okay, this will, this will settle down in a couple of days. Um, I thought I had like some kind of flu or something. Um, cause I didn't feel well in addition to that. Like I felt sick. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then, um, I guess two or three days after that had started, um, and, and while that was happening, you know, I had to keep messaging my boss. I'm like feeling really sick. I can't work. I have to like, why? And my boss, was, my company was just like so great throughout the whole thing. Um, but I remember, you know, I was like, okay, I'll just log back in tomorrow. I'm just going to like take this afternoon off. And then one of those two or three days after it started um, in the evening, I just, like had the worst headache and it just kept ramping up and up and up and i was sitting on the couch and i was like almost crying and my husband's like i have to take you to the to the emerge i'm like no i don't you know what are they gonna do for me there it's a headache and he's like you have to go look at you you can't you know you're, you're paralyzed you can't do anything and my head i felt like my head was just like there were waves of, of pain going across my head. I never felt anything like that before. So I was terrified. And again, thinking that I was like poisoned or like just something chemically was like really bad. In my mm -hmm. Yeah. So we went, um, you know, they did a bunch of tests. They gave me a, I forget what, um, anti-inflammatory prednisone prednisone they prescribed prednisone and um sent me home and that just kicked everything off to like a whole new level of terror like i don't know what it's just i reacted very badly to that drug um everything i felt seemed more heightened it was almost like i was on drugs not like, you know, a, a narcotic or a something, marijuana or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, I would just, every sound, every like noise in the house would just be like, it was like so loud. Everything was just more intense and scary. Um, and it went on for about two weeks. I stopped taking the medication like two or three days into it and I wasn't supposed to, but it, I was like, I'm, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> And I'm terrified. I can't like just sit in bed like, like this, like, please make it stop. So um, I stopped, but it, it felt like it took about two weeks for things to like level off to just like the status quo ear ringy <laughs> dizziness from all of that like heightened stuff. Um, so yeah, like again, fear went from like here to like up here within that period. And then the dizziness felt like it got worse. Um, the ears, I think, felt like they, you know, it would fluctuate, be a bit better, a bit worse, but not really, no real improvement. Um, so that went on for a few months. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, again, during that time, I, I, I had to stop working. I couldn't work because it was just, yeah, not possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Familiar story. Having been part of the coaching group, you, you, unfortunately, you hear a lot of stories. You've heard a lot of stories just mm -hmm. like yours. So, okay. So, so give me a sense of where we're at now. So we're in 2022. Are we in like mid 2022 when you have to stop working because things are just so bad? No, it was, or it was in January. By the end okay. of January, I'd By stop. the end of January, you just stopped yeah. working. Okay. So, Usually, this sets off some desperate answer seeking. So I'm wondering what that looked like for you. Yeah, I was like, I mean, you know, I had to spend a few weeks figuring out my financial situation, you know, applying for 
um, benefits and blah, blah. So like, and it was all I could do to like get on a computer and like, you know, try to like- That's right, you trouble with screens too, right? Yeah, yeah, well, the vision, right? Um, yeah. So these glasses actually, you know, joined my life <laughs> um, in 2022. So they've got a tint. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if I need to wear them anymore, but I still wear them. They're Probably happy. not, but hey, why not? Yeah, I like them. Yeah. They make me look smart. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so, you know, I did, I had like the full gamut of like up and down testing, you know, left and right, uh, like everything was tested. Um, no stone was left unturned. Every test um, came back saying you're healthy. There's nothing we can really do for you. Um, and yeah, go home. So, so I knowing that there was something really, really wrong with me wouldn't give up. So, you know, I would, um, you know, as many of us are, uh, you know, how, which probably led us to you just like being um, online, searching, dizziness, ear ringing, this and that. You, so I'd come up with other um, people who do things like you, but not as well. Um, and it, they weren't quite right. They weren't answering, you know, my my real questions, getting to the roots of like, why is this happening and how do I stop it from happening? Um, so, and they were very expensive and you didn't know if it was a real solution because you didn't know if like that was your actual problem. Um, so, but I think one of the first videos I'd seen of yours, um, you had said that like you normalized it, like all of the things that you're feeling are normal. You're not like you didn't say this in so many words, but you're not dying. This is a normal reaction to a heightened nervous system. And I'm like, really? Because this seems pretty extreme. Like, this is crazy. How, how can this be normal? Totally. Um, but I was like, at the point where I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll give her a try. Let's, you know, it's not going to hurt. <laughs> I can't well, hurt that's anymore. why all of the stuff's on YouTube and the free course. I mean, it's free. So it's like, yeah, okay, let's see if it makes sense and resonates. Yeah. And back to the, the visual symptoms. So in that first video, you had talked about visual symptoms and nobody had ever even, you know, that was like the thing everyone dismissed. Ah, you're fine. Cause I'd had my eyes tested like up the wazoo also, and my vision was perfect. And, you know, but I'm like, what, what's that weird stuff I'm seeing? And you talked about it and said that it's actually really common. And I cried because it, like, I think the visual symptoms for us dizzy people are those, is that symptom that, like, never leaves you. Like, you open your eyes and it's it's there. You can't escape it. Um, it's not something you can lie down and it'll, like, you know, dissipate or whatever. Like, it's with you 24-7 as long as you're awake. So that, you know, that was the thing that bothered me the most, um, that, and of course, like I, I had the bouncing, I would walk and I'd feel like I was like flying in the air and it just, it's so disturbing, um, and very difficult to explain to people who are not experiencing it or haven't. Um, you know, I just felt like everybody was, you know, my family, as much as they cared and, and helped me, they really did. Like everyone, you know, tried to help, but, as we know, sometimes people trying to help is is the worst thing. Because <laughs> you like, just leave me alone. You're not helping, and you know. Yeah, it makes you put more pressure on yourself too. Sometimes as a mom, and well, yeah, to... yeah, like you yeah. judge yourself really hard. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, and I think that's um, a characteristic of us dizzy people. We judge ourselves really hard, and we're unforgiving, and we don't even really we don't know that we're doing that. We don't know that it's an issue that yeah. we do that. Um, so yeah, like when, it, when you started talking about feelings and emotions, I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? Why is she talking about feelings? Dizziness. Problems my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> my eyes, my ears, not emotions. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah. I, it makes me wonder, and you probably have a different perspective on this now, but how much do you think your prior experiences 
with medically unexplained symptoms played a role in how this went? Yeah. I mean, I was a hypochondriac. Like anything that happened, I would be like, oh my God, I'm dying. It's going to get worse. Like, like my back's going to go out on me again and I'm going to be laid up for like weeks and I won't be able to take my daughter to her this, this, and this class. And, you know, family vacation's going to be ripped. Like it would just like escalate <laughs> so quickly in my brain. Um, and I, and now looking back on it, I, I know that I did that like as a child, like, so, so it's a I long standing was, pattern. It was one of those. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I didn't know that that was a problem. Nobody, you know, my caretakers, my parents didn't know that that was a problem that should be addressed. Um, so, you know, it, it just kind of was what it was and ended up where it did for, you know, for very important reasons. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you for that. So, Okay, so it sounds like things just escalated. They got worse. You're out of work. You start desperately searching. You start going to a bazillion doctors. And you, at some point, you find my videos. And where are we at in 2022 when you find my videos? I think I found your videos in probably late summer, either end of mm -hmm. August or sometime in September. Yeah. Um, so of course I just like started watching them all. I'm like, wow, like this kind of makes sense. It doesn't like, I don't know about the feelings, but all the other stuff she's seen, <laughs> you know, like makes sense. This, you know, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then shortly after that, you put out word that you were going to start the groups. And, um, I was on it. I was like, and again, I was afraid. I'm like, if I actually, um, reach out and connect and start participating, then that means this is what I have. And that's really bad. So again, I'm just, bad. yeah, um, Tell me. Just because it's terrifying again, it, it, you know, like you're a dizzy person and, and you, I don't, you know, see it online that people had this for years and years and years mm. and it, you know, how debilitating. I knew how debilitating it was, but you know, I hadn't been experiencing it for that long. That must've been, so hard because on one, you know, and I'd never really thought about that, Sam, but mm -hmm. I think for some people finding like the name for it is so comforting because they're like, oh, okay, there's a name for this thing. I'm not making this up. But mm -hmm. for other people, yeah, if you Google it, I actually just made a video about this yesterday, criticizing the way that this is portrayed online. But if you Google it, of course, the medical establishment gives people just utter nonsense that's not evidence-based, mm -hmm. but but says terrible things and has terrible prognoses for people. So yeah, giving it that one of those names actually can be scary. It yeah, can be yeah. like, I, mean, I don't want to accept that I have this thing. Yeah. yeah. You're scared to know and you're scared not to know. Mm -hmm. But like it, honestly, it was such a relief to like have a name for it. Um, okay, so there that, was that. And, mm -hmm. and it made all of the like seemingly random symptoms make sense that they actually belonged to this condition. And I wasn't like poisoned and dying and just like my body was like shutting down. <laughs> and like that, that's what was going on in my mind because uh, you know, without this explanation, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and in all honesty, you were feeling physically awful. Oh, so yeah. before we go on to the fun stuff, can you just give us a sense of what, a day in the life was like when you were at your lowest point? Oh my gosh. Um, it's hard. Like, I don't even want to like go back there because I feel so removed from that now. But like at my lowest, you know, I would have to get my daughter. I would force myself in the mornings to get up a little bit early so that I could like get all the shaky, you know, like just get my stuff steady before my daughter got up and um and it was it you know I had nausea I was dizzy um my head hurt um my ears were still doing their thing um so it just felt like I was being attacked from like every which way every sense was like on fire um, and I was so tired. It was like a, a level of exhaustion. Like I just didn't want to wake up. I was like, 
kind of just like lie here all day. You know, this is as much peace as I can get <laughs> in my life now. So, you know, I'd like to just lie here. Um, and during that time, I was also getting frequent migraines. Like, we, like I would get, um, it felt like an electric shock going off. In my room. So again, you know, not knowing that that was all neurological symptoms, mm-hmm. um, I, I just thought I was dying. Like, <laughs> my brain's going to explode, all this other stuff. Um, so, and, you know, I would have migraines like that daily, um, mostly at night. Um, so, like, I approached evenings with, like, a level of fear, like, you can't even imagine. You know, I would pace. I paced a lot during that. I would just, like, walk around my house pacing. And, you know, I I felt like I had to do something. So, if I was moving, at least that was something um, other than lying down, even though lying down made me feel better. But I felt like I needed to, like, try to do something to fix this. That physical activity would be better than nothing. Um so, um, yeah, so it basically everything in my life was, I had to force myself. There was no joy. There was like no nothing eating. I was, I couldn't eat. I, oh, I, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I think I was down to about 106 pounds at one point. Um, you know, and I'd been like, a, you know, one between 120 and 130 before, so I, that's a, a good chunk of weight to lose for. Oh yeah, for a small, right? Petite person. Oh, we're both, now, we're both I mean, petite people. All like, <laughs> but it's healthier, mm-hmm. I think. So um, yeah, I just felt like I was under attack. Like it was like PTSD from something I didn't even know that had happened to me. Um, so that was life. And I just like every single thing that I, if I had to, I, so I would pick my daughter up from school around 2.30. That's when her day ends. And I would spend the whole day like, you know, worrying, what if I can't get out of the house to go pick her up? What's going to happen? So like my life would res- revolve around like the tasks that I had to do and just like being afraid of doing them. Wow. So, yeah. Thank you for being willing to go back there again. I know it's not a fun question to answer, but you know, people watching this are yeah. like right there right it's now. It's so important to share this stuff because again, like we're all locked in our little worlds of, of fear until we realize that it's normal, like normalizing being in the groups and in hearing that, yeah, you're not like a weirdo. This is not unique. Um, it's not fun. It's not super common to everybody but to this condition it, it's, it's actually, very common yeah yeah what you're describing is like to, to a t like what people experience yeah mm-hmm. okay so uh, now we can move on to the more fun questions uh, so 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 when did things really start to turn around and how so really after i you know started attending the group and i um, and in the early days, like I would just sit in there like quiet. I, you know, I, I was actually also terrified. I wanted to hear what people had to say, but I was also terrified of hearing what people had to say. Yeah. People talk about symptoms, they, yeah. their bad experiences. Yeah. And yeah. there were a few people in the group that, you know, as terrible as I thought I had it, they had it worse and had had it longer and had had, had a much more devastating effect on their lives. And and again, you know, like my brain just took that to like <laughs> the worst of the worst places. And there were times where I would just like mute the computer and leave and come back. Cause I'm like, I can't, I can't like, cause again, you would relate all that stuff to you and you're like, Oh God, that, you know, is that going to happen to me? I, you know, I, I don't think I could deal with, with anything worse, getting worse on me at this point. So, but really like, that was the turning point for me because you hear the stories, you hear that, that, um, you know, people are experiencing the same things as you, it becomes normalized. Around the same time that I discovered you on YouTube, I came across um, someone else who's in the mind-body field, Dan Buglio, and he had said something that really connected with me. Um, It was just that he said that 
all the things that you're feeling. And, and he, he didn't, you know, specifically deal with dizzy people. It was like pain and like all sorts of things. Um, but he said that all the things that you are feeling are just part of the human experience. You know, like humans feel these things. And I was like, okay, so it's not like, it's not bad. It just is. Um, and, you know, that was like a major, like in my head, that just that really helped. clicked and made all of the random, scary, terrifying things be okay. So interesting. Cause I feel like on one hand, someone could hear that and be like, but it's not, it's so scary. Like how, how, what do you think in you was ready to hear that? Cause I think you, you have to be at a certain point in your life and a certain point in your recovery or your mindset maybe to be able to hear that and say, Oh, this is, this is relieving. This is actually really helpful versus mm -hmm. like, what are you saying? You're saying it's not real. It's very real. I'm feeling really, really sick right now. Yeah. I think just given my history with the fibromyalgia and all the other stuff, I was just sick of being sick and I, I needed something to do about it. <laughs> and that seemed to be my way out. Wow. Or forward, not necessarily out. Cause I don't know that I ever thought I could be cured, but it felt like, like a legitimate way forward. Nice. Okay. Thank you. What a, what a great mm -hmm. answer. Okay. So you found Dan's stuff. You found my stuff. You joined the group. You courageously were able to expose yourself to hearing other people talk about symptoms, which we really don't do a ton of in the group, but you're of course going to hear about symptoms. And what happened next? Like, cause I, I seem to recall, so there were two parts and Sam, this is just my perspective. So there's mm -hmm. probably more here. But there were two things. One was this reduction in fear and normalizing that you're, you've already spoken of. But there mm -hmm. was a second, it seems like there was a kind of a second step in your recovery where once it was normalized and you felt less fear, you were able to take the next step. So I'm wondering if you've thought about what, like what changed from there? Well, I think at that point, I started buying into the mind body connection. I mean, as much as, you know, I had been like, okay, this is what it is. I hadn't really like digested that and understood what it meant to like go down that path to, to like really understanding and, um, you know, like what the steps are, like what's my next step? Because there really are, it's a process. It's not just a like, I understand this now, so I'm better. Um, there's, you know, it's really like, again, getting in touch with your feelings, which I can't even believe I'm saying because it's not something I, I would have said because I didn't understand what it meant. Um, but I think that was like the beginning where I, even though I still didn't know what it meant, I knew that it was important and that I had to work on it and I had to figure out like, what do, like, what do I do? So what, what did you do? Uh, and, and again, I, I know that's a super unknown question, but see if you can tell us, because this is what people have so much trouble with, turning yeah. the theory into practice. Mm -hmm. So how did you turn the theory into practice with feeling your feelings or putting, you know, putting some of the other mind body concepts into play? Yeah. So, I mean, I think you had like brought up the idea of journaling, which I hated. I'm like, I don't want to journal. I don't want to like beat a dead horse. Like, I know, like, I feel bad. I don't want to, like, write about it and think about it more. Um, but I, I started making notes. So it wasn't necessarily, like, a structured thing, but I would, like, have a thought and I would write it down in terms of, like, I feel like this. Why do I think I feel like that? And initially, like, it was a bunch of, like, nonsense. Like, you know, it, it's just, like, just stuff right? That comes through your mind and you're like, oh, I don't feel good. Maybe it's because of this. And I was trying to like make direct connections. I feel terrible. But I feel worse today because, right? And you know, it doesn't necessarily work. Like it kind of does, but it goes a lot deeper, right? Like, yes, something happened that triggered this, but it's not really that thing. It's the thing that happened like six years ago. 
that actually <laughs> triggered you. Um, but you know, it's so deep that you can't see it. So, and, and that's really the crux of like what I learned is that yes, you know, I have all this nonsense that's going on right now. I don't understand. It seems like crazy. Um, but you know, I had bought into the mind body, um, explanation. And so I was at that point really committed to figuring out like, you know, what, what, what actually caused all this. And I, you know, again, didn't know like where to start or what it meant or like, I didn't have the language and I probably still don't, but I, I just like, you know, I'm more educated about what it means mm -hmm. and where, things, where all this stuff comes from. Yeah. So sounds like a lot of it was really buying in and yeah. starting to see for yourself Oh, oh, this stuff actually does happen for a reason. When I say this stuff, I don't mean on a, like for a reason on like a global level. What I mean is when I see flares or when I see symptoms come on at a particular time, this is my nervous system being reactive. Mm -hmm. And there's usually, there's usually some reason why the nervous system is reactive mm -hmm. in a particular way. So I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk to us a little more about feelings. So how did you... How did you start working on that? Since that was something you had, it sounds like you had a lot of trouble buying into at first. Yeah. I mean, feelings in, you know, growing up in my culture and my family and, you know, all that stuff. Um, we're not like, I just never thought of them as real, real, right. They were just like, okay. <laughs> you know, so you, feel that fine, but let's like focus on the real issue um, or the real important things. And so I, I, I didn't know how to value them. Didn't know that they were valuable. Didn't know like the impact that, you know, disruption there could have. Um, Cause I didn't believe, I was like, well, this is how I feel, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, you know, as you're speaking, I, you please correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like mm -hmm. this is where the group may have played a big role because mm -hmm. even when you're not being directly coached, you're seeing other yeah. people have these emotional experiences. And, and as yeah. you know, Sam, people tend to have so much in common and some of that's just by circumstance, like you're all going through similar things, but there are a lot of people have similar personality traits, similar, like kind of go getter attitudes. Again, I'm not trying to make grand generalizations, but a lot of, a lot of you have stuff in common. Mm -hmm. and so when you see someone else who's really struggling with exactly the same things you're struggling with and who has some similar traits to you talk about emotions and work through an emotional um, situation in a supported, regulated way that it sounds like that would have some impact on you, even if you're not doing direct work on a specific issue that happened to you. Yeah. I mean, it was validation, right? It was, it was having people listen and, and really get what I was saying and understand it and genuinely be um, empathetic mm -hmm. because they're living it too. Um, but it was also, yeah. So I think it was, it was just, validating because I could talk to anybody else in my life and they would feel bad for me. They would try to help me. They would, you know, be there as much as they could for but they didn't, didn't really get it. Um, yeah. And yeah, they didn't have us. I don't know. It, it, it was just a community where like, I felt like I belonged and they got me. Yeah. You know, got so it. Yeah, and, it and it's kind of just valid, like being listening with an ear that like you actually knew they understand what I'm saying. They don't think I'm crazy. Because crazy. literally everywhere else in my life, you felt like, you know, you're insane or you're just making this up or, you know, like, wow, wow, wow. Like, I just, you know, I think most of us or a lot of us eventually just turn inward and just don't talk about it and, and you know, shove those feelings down even more because, you know, you know, it's not that anyone would say anything in particular, but, you know, you get the looks or the, oh, God, she's talking about it again. And or, you know, why can't she just get it? And again, I'm putting that <laughs> that voice 
on, you know, the people in my lives. They maybe not, maybe they didn't think that, but that's, you know, judging myself. And, you know, that's the mirror that I saw back at myself. Well, I notice you're using past tense about that. So this is telling me something. And again, it's something I just know to be true because I've seen your process here. You've changed. You've mm -hmm. changed. So I I hesitate to say this because people don't want to hear that change is part of the, the recovery process. But frankly, you've all gone through something really difficult, traumatic even. And change, you've you've you're changing, whether you, you want to change or not. Uh so I think change is part of the process of recovery, but it doesn't need to me mean, oh, everything in my life is totally different and everything sucks, but rather there's a new, improved, like more resilient, stronger version of you on the other side. That's what I mean by it. So Sam, what does that change process look like for you? So you're getting all this validation. You're, you understand this is mind body now, the central sensitization you're starting to realize like, wow, my emotions might actually be valid. So what, what started to change for you? Um, everything really. So, you know, that was when the realization that, um, and somebody had said this to me, like a nutritionist that I had gone to during, you know, when I was going to like every doctor, I'm knocking on all the doors. And she said, there's a reason you're here right now. Um, and, you know, I was like, I didn't understand, but she, that's exactly what she got at that, you know, it's emotional. There are very specific, real reasons why you're here right now, things that led you to be here. Um, and I was like, you know, at that point in time, my mindset was what, like, what the hell are you talking? Just help me, like, <laughs> give me something to fix this. And, and I think, um, Part of the realization in the process was as terrifying as it was, was realizing that really, you know, it was all in my hands. It was all up to me to fix myself. Um, and, you know, because really we all just want the pill. We all just want the, you know, something just like fix me now so I can get back to my life. Um, but when I really started leaning into the fact that the solution was with me and not with a doctor somewhere that I hadn't found yet. Um, that's really, you know, what kind of put me on the path. Yeah. So I, I understand that that message can be really scary and make people feel helpless sometimes at first, but on the other mm -hmm. hand, it can make people feel really empowered. And it sounds like you were at the point, maybe because you'd been through this for a long time, honestly, but prior mm -hmm. to happiness, you were already, you were ready to say, you know what? I find this empowering. It means that I can actually do this. No one's yeah. going to do it for me, but I can. I can do this. Yeah. yeah. And I think another, like one of the things that I still do now um, is, and this was like a technique that I think I, you know, works for me is that when I feel something, you know, negative or that, you know, something that scares me or whatever. I'm like, nice try brain. <laughs> you know, like I call it out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like you call out somebody's BS. I yeah. call it my brain's like starting to go down that path. And that really mixes it from going any further, which, you know, I think works. And that may not have worked at first either. So, you no, know, cause I didn't know what right. I was even talking right Speaking to now. But now, th that's such a good point, though, because I think people freak out because um, they're like, well, does this mean I'm never going to have any dizziness sensations ever again? And I'm like, no, because dizziness sensations are normal. I feel dizzy sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. But my brain doesn't care. So, yeah. so the idea is you can learn a, a skill of, of kind of bringing that forward. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it sounds like you have that. So... So tell me what the recovery process looked like then. So you joined the group. It was toward the end of 2022 when you joined, like October of 2022. Mm -hmm. And you, like how many months until you started feeling more functional? I would say six, maybe mm -hmm. five, six months. Mm-hmm. 
And functional, you know, there's degrees of functional, right? There's definitely <laughs> degrees of functional. <laughs> yeah. There's the functional where I can get out of the bed and go to the bathroom. And there is functional where I can let like, drive and pick up my kid at school. So, you know, there's, it's a scale. It's definitely. Scale. But yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I had to go back to work in June of 2023 and again, that was a, like, I just felt like every single thing I was pushing myself and forcing myself and like, it, it was just it was hard. hard. There's yeah. like no part of it that wasn't an uphill battle. Like it sucked until it did. Right. Like it was just like a slog. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt like there was something happening. Like there was some kind of momentum, some kind of change. I still felt crappy, but not as terrified. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the momentum kept building. You went on a roller coaster a few months after that. <laughs> so things, <laughs> things just kind of gradually get better from there. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, when you're in it, it feels so like, ridiculously slow it feels like you're moving at a snail's pace but now looking back on it the time where i was at my worst you know i've more than doubled that mm -hmm. where i am sitting now mm -hmm. so I've, I've been in recovery more than twice as long as i was at my worst mm -hmm. so and i don't even like saying i'm in recovery i'm just like in life <laughs> i'm like yes. right so yes um, yeah, I don't even know what I was trying to say, but yeah, I love that. Whatever, whatever it was that you were trying to say, you said something amazing. So <laughs> we'll go. We're going to go with that. So, at at what point then did you say, "I'm good"? Like I don't need to be part of the group anymore. I'm in life. I'm not in recovery. I'm in life now. Yeah, it was probably towards the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. Like it got to like November, December, and I was like should I stay in the group? Should I not? Like, what am I going to do if I'm not in the group? I'm just going to yeah. like, <laughs> like I knew, I knew what I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to let go yet. And, and the other thing was it felt good to be able to, to help people in the group and it just does. say, yeah, I get you. Like, yes, I like legit have had everything that you have and you're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, so there was that. So it was a little bit of a fear to like, let that go. Cause it was a bit of a security blanket and it was, it was that, but also just the place where I could go where people like understood. Everything right. That I totally. Did. And what a big hearted group too. I mean, they're just I know. like, there's so much vulnerability and intimacy too. It's just, I know that's a, it's really a special. It learned how to share. Yeah. In the group. So yeah. that was the thing that I didn't know before. So I learned a lot of the language and I learned, you know, how to communicate about feelings. Um, yeah. So how's I that mean, impacted your real life? Has that impacted you? Yeah. I mean, like there are things in my, like, so I'm kind of at a place where I don't let all the BS like drag me down as much as I used to. Like I used to just get so wrapped up in what other people thought and, you know, Try. I was a people people pleaser, which I think a lot of us are, um, and perfectionist. <laughs> so Thanks. that's also a big downfall for a lot of us. So now, I mean, I, I'm, I try to be better with not with the perfectionism as much as like, <laughs> you know, I have the the urge to to want to like nitpick and do, but then I'm like, ah, whatever. I feel like there was a story of a sock on the floor. I feel yeah. like, yeah, yes. that was very, um, it just illustrated to me, like what it meant to like, not be like OCD. And, and that's one of the things that I've struggled with too. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, she's nine, so she's very messy. <laughs> uh, I don't know if all nine year olds are, but I probably, my 10 year old is. So yeah, I'm, well, the room's I'm always to believe it. Yeah. And I had always been that person. And I still am. I mean, like, it's not gone. It's it's there. But I'm that person who will follow people and, like, put things back in their spots. Because I'm like, like I, I just don't like mess. It just, like, I feel like it impacts 
you know, how I feel. And, you know, I like things to be neat. And so I passed by her room and of course it was a disaster. And I, you know, there was a sock at the door and I was, a, I, went, I leaned down to pick it up and put it in her bin. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to touch it. I will just close the door <laughs> and go. And wow. Did. Yep. I, I mean, and I, that's such a great story because I feel like that seems like such a small thing, but if people are trying to think about like what impact is this having, what change did Sam go mm -hmm. through? Just take that and amplify that times a yeah, hundred. Yeah, like, multiply that by a thousand, and that's my day is like running after all these things that are right and trying to and not doing that now. Yeah, and how much less stress you're under on the inside from that? Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, so people are going to want to know then how, how are you feeling physically? And I would love if you could also just relate to the fibromyalgia symptoms. Cause I know that there's been a change there as well. So I don't have fibromyalgia anymore. If I ever did, I don't know, but I don't have like the, the permeating like body pain that I used to have, um, like everywhere. And it was crippling. It's, it was like, no joke. I would, yeah. I mean, it, it, it pretty much stole like 20 years of my life, um, believing that, that, you know, that's how I had to live. Um, and it's gone all of a sudden. So, and, you know, of course it isn't all of a sudden. It's because I understand now where I came from and I, I am like taking steps to, to do something about it. Um, but really, again, it's, it's on me to, to, affect that change. It's not a pill. It's not a medication. It's not, you know, chiropractic or whatever. Um, so yeah, no fibromyalgia, but I do still have dizziness here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Tell me what that looks like just for people to, to hear. Cause yeah, people have this misconception again about what it means to to have like normal sensation, like what it means to have dizziness. So maybe tell us kind of on an average day, what, what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, just call it dizziness seems extreme. It's just sensations, right? I'll just feel like if I look up too quickly or look down too quickly or something's very bright, I'll like, you know, have a moment where I'm like, Oh, but it doesn't terrify me. Like it used to. And I'm like, okay, it's fine moving on. Mm -hmm. um, so really that's, that's what it looks like. It's, you know, how much I, does I that impact your life? Not at all. I, I mean, sometimes I, I, again, I get back to the judging part of myself where I'm like, Oh, I shouldn't be feeling that. And that's not, and then I'm like, Nope, it's normal. Moving on. Right. Like you, it's so easy to just like send yourself down that path of totally. Yeah. But yeah. I, I really, that, that, you know, technique of just saying nice try brain, it really does work. Wow. Me. Yeah. I'm going to ask kind of a controversial question now. Mm -hmm. So my, what I'm curious to hear is, so one of the, the things that the people in the medical community like to say is that PPPD can only be managed long-term. Mm -hmm. And I, I take so much issue with people saying this. So I'm curious to hear if, the recovery that you've experienced is something you would call managing your condition. No, because my life is actually better than it was before I got dizzy. I don't have the pain. Um, I understand where those symptoms come from. Um, I'm not thinking about them all the time and, and, you know, and managing them. Like I'm not babysitting those symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not and holding you back and they're yeah. moments in time. It sounds like if they yeah. have their moments. In time. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's uh, an accurate description. They're, they're mm -hmm. literally moments and then they're mm -hmm. gone. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Again, like, uh, I think understanding that we're human and we're going to have bad days and that it's okay and normal and human, um, it is critical. So yes, I agree with you. And, you know, I also tell people during recovery, there's a recalibration process of like, toward what normal is. So people who've never experienced chronic symptoms, 
just kind of take for granted that they have weird sensations that their brains don't care about. So when I get up too quickly, every time I feel dizzy, but I don't, again, my brain doesn't attach meaning to that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't register. I don't remember it. But if I think about it, how many times did I feel dizzy today? Or how many times did I feel pain today? It actually happens quite a bit. I mean, this happens to everyone, mm -hmm. but our brains just, when you've never had a chronic symptom before, your brain doesn't attach meaning to it. You so let it go. I, you let it go. So I kind of wonder mm -hmm. for people who are in this point or at this point that you're at, if there's still a continual recalibration process over time where the brain slowly kind of just even lets go of the meaning behind anything that's still happening. And it truly is something your brain doesn't even notice anymore. I think so. Um, but again, I think it's okay if it's not like where I am right now, like if I feel things for the rest of my life, that are like fleeting. It's okay. Right. Um, right. And yeah, it's, it's being okay with that. And, and, Again, having a tool that when those things come up and you're like, hey, what is that? You know, your brain's like, oh, my God, what is that? And you have something to, you have a response. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's constructive, right? Yeah. That, that shuts it down immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And and that that response becomes more automated over time. So it doesn't, yeah. you don't spend your whole day batting away symptoms. It's just. It's yeah. Just no. Whereas, you know, like whenever way back, I would have obsessed about something weird that I felt like yesterday. I was like, what was that? Does that mean something? Is it mm -hmm. like, do I have brain cancer? <laughs> you know, like that's where my mind would go, like mm -hmm. to the absolute worst place it possibly could. And yeah. 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 Well, Sam, it is again, such a privilege to get to have this conversation with you since again, I've been there for the whole journey. Some of the people I interview, I I wasn't there for their journeys. And it's cool to hear this, you know, someone's story from the beginning to the end, but I know all the nuances of your story. And so it's just, again, so such a privilege. Before we end this conversation though, any final words of wisdom or advice to people who are dealing with chronic dizziness right now? Yeah. Um, just believe that you can and will get better. Like number one, that was one of the things that I took away from your early videos, um, that there is a way forward. Um, you know, it's different for everybody. So that's the sucky thing. Can't really tell you, you know, do this, this, and this, and you're cured, but it's legitimately like it can happen and will happen if you work on it. And that unfortunately probably looks different for everybody, but you can figure it out. Yeah. 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 And they say Very that true. with confidence, like, cause uh, I didn't believe it either. Yeah. And I mean, again, the dizziness for you was, I, I wouldn't say brief. I mean, we're talking over, I mean, like a, about two years, mm -hmm. but, um, the fibromy fibromyalgia was decades. So yeah. I, I mean, I, and again, to, in my experience, those things are part of the same syndrome, central sensitization mm -hmm. or mind body syndrome. So yeah. Well, Sam, again, thank you so much for taking the time and agreeing to do this. I, I am sorry we didn't have a bird cameo, but I understand. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's out terrorizing. He's, yeah. Well, that's 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 his job in life to go out terrorize to other terrorize other people. I, I'm calling him a person, I guess. Anyway, thank you again so much. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Of course, if you found this conversation helpful, we would love to hear from you. You can leave questions or comments below if you're on YouTube or if you're listening to this as a podcast, head on over to YouTube, leave some comments. I love hearing your thoughts and what we're doing here. And you can also subscribe, like, share this video or this podcast. These things all help me reach more people. So thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.